So today we're going to be looking at diffraction of a single and double slit experiment using a laser. The objective of this experiment is to determine the slit width of a single and double slit by using a laser. So in this example here we have two waves, wave 1 and wave 2, and when they combine, if the crest is in alignment with the crest of wave 2 and the troughs of wave 1 and wave 2 are, are aligned, then this produces a wave with larger amplitude and that's known as constructive interference. Now in this situation where these two waves combine, if the crest of one wave is aligned with the trough of another wave, then you get what, what's known as destructive interference, which produces a wave of smaller um, amplitude. And um, a special case of this is when the crest of one wave is equal to the trough of another wave or vice versa, then uh, you get no wave here and that produces a dark spot and what is called as um, complete destructive interference. Now, um, this experiment is divided into two parts. In the first part, we're going to be looking at uh, a single slit diffraction, but right now I'm going to talk about a uh, double slit diffraction. So when you have two waves here and they meet at this point on the screen, if the two waves are in phase, it's going to produce a bright area on the screen known as constructive interference. And in this case, the two waves are out of phase. So uh, you're going to see a dark area on the screen, and that's going to be destructive interference. Looking at this diagram, we can see that ray 1 has to travel a, lot, a shorter distance than ray 2 does to get to this point. So the difference in the distances that they have to travel is represented by d sine theta. So using this um, information, we can determine the maximum. So a maximum occurs when d sine theta is equal to m lambda, where m is equal to any integer. And we can also determine where the minimum occurs and that's when d sine theta is equal to m plus one half times lambda. And so that we know that theta is very small, so we can make the approximation that sine theta is equal to tangent theta, which is also equal to y over l. And using all this information, we can find the d, which is equal to the slit width. For this experiment, we're gonna need a laser beam, um, a interference and diffraction slit, for this experiment, we're going to use the single slit and the double slit set. Um, you're also going to need a ruler and a screen. So um, when you do this experiment, you're going to want to turn off the lights to make uh, to, so you can see the diffraction pattern better. And so when you do that, you are going to see this pattern. And as you see here, this is the central maximum. And to the right and the left, right here and right here, are the first maximum. Then these two are the second maximum, and so on and so forth. And so what you want to do is you want to measure the distance between the central maximum and the first maximum. But in order to be more accurate, you can measure the distance between the two first maximums um, and then divide by two. And you're going to repeat this procedure for the second maximum, the third maximum, and so forth and uh, also make sure to measure the length, which is the distance between the screen and the diffraction slit, and you're going to record all of this in your data table. After you've found the slit width from the experiment, you're going to use it to compare um, it to the theoretical slit width, which you can find using this um, diagram here. So in this experiment, we used um, this one right here, the second one from the top. And so using this, you're going to be able to find the theoretical slit width. Um, then you can compare it to the experimental slit width, and you're going to f uh, find the percent error between the two.